the Stallion Search Film of the Month. Brought to you by Horse Logic. Visit them at horselogicpro.com. One of the favorite times of the year for quarter horse racing fans and horsemen alike is summertime in Riadosa, New Mexico, with all of the top quarter horse futurities taking place year after year, as well as the September yearling sale on the Labor Day weekend. I would say I'm no different. Riadosa is one of my favorite places, and I get to go multiple times a year for all the big events with the job at stallionesearch.com. Now, while in Riados, I get a chance to see one of my good friends and one of the best people you'll ever meet, retired thoroughbred trainer Hal Wiggins. And those who don't know Hal Wiggins, well, he trained an absolute monster on the thoroughbred side. To stardom by the name of Rachel Alexandra, she is considered one of the top thoroughbred fillies ever to look through a racing bridle winning eight straight stakes, including one amazing Kentucky Oaks in an absolute scintillating performance. A performance that most likely would have won her the Kentucky Derby that year in 2009. After that performance, she was sold for a substantial amount of money before going on to win the 2009 running of the Preakness Stakes, and then retiring at $3.5 million earned on the racetrack. Now, Hal and his wife Renee spend the summers in Riadoso, and after the summer, Hal still frequents the yearling thoroughbred sales at Keeneland in Lexington, Kentucky, as well as the Saratoga yearling sale in upstate New York to assist his son, who is a thoroughbred trainer with picking out yearlings. Now, I had an idea that I asked of Hal. How effective would it be if Hal used his highly skilled eye for thoroughbreds and applied it to some of the finest quarter horse yearlings in the world through the Riadosa Select yearling sale during the Labor Day weekend last year? And as most of the stallionesearch.com faithful know, I have to be at most of the sales anyway, so running this experiment was something that would definitely enhance my time during the long nights at the Riadosa sale. So here's the concept. We go through the catalog looking for a runner to select, and then we go to the sale and view the yearlings with a hypothetical $80,000 or so to spend. Kind of like a fantasy football concept, but for the quarter horses. And hopefully Hal helps me find a runner using the thoroughbred eye for the quarter horse buy. When you get to know Hal, you will realize that Hal is quite the horseman, and he shows a true love of the sport of horse racing and for being in Riadosa for the summer meet. My background in quarter horse racing was uh, I worked at Riadosa Downs in 1957 and 58 for the leading trainer. He had quarter horses and thoroughbreds, but uh, he had mostly quarter horses. Brought directly to you at the barn, Horse Logic, equine supplement products scientifically formulated for the competitive horse and chosen by top professionals in the quarter horse racing world to help you achieve success. From sail fitting yearlings to putting powerful muscle growth into a runner, Horse Logic gives horsemen the advantage of proven supplements for peak performance. The hottest name in supplements in the quarter horse racing world, Horse Logic Professional. And later on in my life, I started training thoroughbreds, trained thoroughbreds for a little over 30 years, and had the privilege of training a really, really nice horse towards the end of my year uh, by the name of Rachel Alexandra. She was uh, she won the Kentucky Oaks uh, as a three-year-old uh, by a little over 20 lengths, and uh, went on to be horse of the year uh, that, that year. I retired from training thoroughbreds about five or six years ago. We spent all the summers in Red Dosa, and I live in Louisville, Kentucky, and I make the Keeneland uh, and Saratoga sales a lot. My son trains and we buy horses for, or we pick out horses for people he trains for. In the thoroughbred world, of course, we go through the catalog and we realize how important the bottom side, the dam side is to the horses. And it's very, very important to me that I noticed in the quarter horse side. It seems like a lot of these top quarter horse mares are top, top producers and their daughters make good producers. And uh, you see that some in the thoroughbred, but I don't think you see it as much as you do in the quarter horse world. How, with over 13 days of the Keeneland sale and over 300 horses in each catalog, how do you and your son go through so many? Okay, when we go to the yearling sales, we, we split up. We pick out the horses by looking at the catalog, and then he looks about at half of them, probably 70 to 80 uh, uh, yearlings, and I look at 70 to 80. We develop a short list, and which is out of 70 to 80, it's usually just about seven, eight, ten horses apiece. And then we look at those together. And uh, of course, we're still we're still culling horses. When you're looking at yearlings, most of what you do is culling, and then you look at the good ones or the ones you think that are good.
uh, when I'm looking at a thoroughbred yearling, the first thing you look at is balance. They need to be well balanced, which everything fits together. The neck fits the shoulder and, and so on down the line. Uh, uh, a horse to me has to have a, a tremendous shoulder, it has to have power in the back end, uh, a short cannon bone, a hocks close to the ground, and that's that's all quarter horse type characteristics. But I, I just naturally look for that when I'm looking at a thoroughbred. The, it will be interesting to, to looking at these quarter horses through a thoroughbred trainer's eyes, and uh, hopefully I could uh, pick out some things that, sh that should make a top running quarter horse. So I got busy scouring through the catalog, looking for those I wanted to look at based on pedigree, and those I didn't want to spend too much time on. So I hopped on a plane with the catalog in tow with a meeting prior to the sale with Hal. So what is the first thing you do to kind of get started on the catalog? So when I first start looking at it, there's, a, there's going to be a good number of horses here that we know we can't afford. We've, we've got a budget. We can just spend so much money. Uh, we know what we can spend on each horse, maybe if we buy two or three. So, but there's going to be some horses that's going to be way out right. of our price range. And we just, uh, so we just don't even go look at it. We're wasting our time and we just have so much time to look at a hundred or so horses. So you're calling the top top end that, that, you, right. that are out of your price range, right. okay? What is a realistic amount of horses that you want to kind of come in with on your, say like your short list of asking them to pull out of the, the stall? Uh, usually for one person, uh, not more than a hundred a day because it, because after you look at the 80, 90, or 100, you're going to have a short list. So that afternoon, you've got to go look at those again. We always like to look at them a second time because I promise you, you'll find something that you didn't see the first time. In fact, I've always said to myself, well, why did I pick that horse? Now I don't like it after the second. So we always go back to, for a second look. Well, you know, hearing what you had to say about the catalog is very interesting, but really what I want to, I want to hear kind of your lecture, say to so, what you're seeing when you're looking at a quarter horse as compared to when you're looking at a thoroughbred. Right. Well, it's going to be interesting to me because uh, when I'm looking at thoroughbreds, I like to see a little quarter horse in them. Right. I like to see a, a powerful hind quarter, a very nice thick shoulder, and uh, so I'm not sure what I want to look at with the quarter horse, but it's going to be interesting, and, and hopefully we can pick out a couple of good ones. We'll see what we can do. Yeah. Uh, well, of course, we won't know until a year from now. <laughs> yeah, right. So <laughs> That's right. We'll be safe for a year. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> So we arrived early a few days before the gavel fell on the first head of yearlings. I felt really fortunate to be able to wander around with Hal for the first few days viewing yearlings. Now keep in mind there are only 432 yearlings in the September sale at Riodoso. Imagine looking through 3,000 yearlings in the catalogs for Keeneland. I've had the luxury of going around with some of the top quarter horse trainers in the world at some of the sales, but getting to hear from the vantage point of a thoroughbred trainer was highly educational. And somebody with Hal's eye was certainly fascinating. And looking at so many yearlings can be overwhelming at times, especially for the first timers. I can tell you I was extremely content trying to absorb all that I could from Hal Wiggins. Hal, we've looked at about 60 yearlings thus far. Uh, we've culled quite a few, uh, getting a shorter list to go and, and look at for a second time. What are some of the uh, similarities or differences that you're seeing once you've kind of looked at these yearlings for the first time on, on, on the quarter horse side? Okay, well, of course, I'm, I'm trying to look for the same thing in the thoroughbreds and the quarter horse. But, uh, of course, naturally, the quarter horses are going to have a lot more power in the back end, a bigger hind quarter. Uh, they have a, a, a lot better shoulder type than, than the thoroughbreds do but I like to see a good shoulder in a thoroughbred, but it won't be as pronounced as what I'm seeing in these quarter horses, and the same way with the hip. And, uh, but the, the uh, confirmation of the front legs, naturally, you're looking for the same thing. You, you don't want to see too much of an offset knee or a back of the knee or, uh, or too much of a, a slope in the pasture. And also, those are pretty similar that you want to look at. Right, but what about size-wise? I mean, these summer yearling sales are July, August, and September, the same mm -hmm. thing in the thoroughbred world. Uh, what about size? The thoroughbreds that you're looking at are much taller, much larger, or are they about the same size as what we're seeing here on the quarter horse side? Well, I think the thoroughbred, because we look at most of those in September at the right. Keeneland sale, but uh, most of those on the average, I say, are, are, are that naturally they're taller, uh, a little longer, but they, they're, 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 they're larger than, the, than these quarter horses I'm looking at. Uh, you know, you've been everywhere in the thoroughbred world. What do you think about the facility here at, at Rio Doso? Uh, it's a really, it's a great facility. I've been to Keelan, Saratoga, OBS in Florida, and uh, Lowell and his staff do a tremendous job here. 
a lot of people don't realize the organization and the work it takes just to set up this thing. And uh, they do it, but you don't even realize it. And uh, for this part of the country, this is a, a first-class facility. It really is. Well, we've gone through about 60. We've still got some more to go. Right. Let's, right. We should probably work. get right. to work and see what we get. They're, they're not all starting to look like the same, like most people have told me before. Right. You see so yeah. many that they start looking the same. Mm -hmm. I'm not at that point yeah, yet, no. but, yeah. uh, right. but I'm, I'm anxious to go see what else is in the catalog. You bet. So yeah. Let's get to work. Day two of looking at yearlings. When we first began looking, Hal mentioned to me that he could spot a horse he eventually would cull as soon as a yearling walked out of the stall. And by this time, I can actually also say I was seeing exactly what he was talking about. The first steps out of the stall, I could tell if we were going to like the yearling or not. And of course, we were trying to spot those quality yearlings. Which is a very well balanced filly. Everything in the front looks really good. Beautiful head and neck on her. Uh, got a tremendous walk when she walked. Good stride. Uh, everything just fits on her just really, really nice. She, she's a very nice filly to look at. She really is. And, just, and it seems like she's got a good mind. She just stands there and lets you look at her. Really, kind of almost can't really falter. I mean, I mean. You, you, you really can't. Everything fits on her nice. And nice front legs. And, just a nice really, really, really like we were starting to get down to our final picks, and we had looked over several of our top picks for the second time. Hal and I were fond of a filly by the Juliana Holtz consignment, hip number 89. The Elegant Empress, a Corona Cartel filly out of the stakes producing first down dash mare by the name of the Creole Queen. Now, this is about as good looking a filly or a coach you want to look at. She's got everything you, you, you want to see. got a tremendous shoulder. Everything fits on the very, very well balanced. Got a really good walk to her. Uh, everything just really, really fits in. Of course, she's a well-bred filly. And Mama's already a, uh, uh, a good producer. Produced a horse that was a uh, finalist in the All-American Rainbow Derby, Rainbow Futurity. So uh, she's a very, very nice filly. Another filly that topped our list was from the Roger Daly consignment. A horse by the name of Paint Her Wild, hip number 131. A March filly by PYC Paint Your Wagon. The, the dam is the runner Wild Six, the winner of the Rainbow Futurity, and a producer of a Futurity winner herself. The only concern at this point would both of these fillies fit underneath our price budget. This is another filly that looks really, really racy. Uh, she, she doesn't have any extra weight on her. Everything looks nice. The front legs look real good. She's very, very well balanced. She's got a real nice shoulder on her. Uh, just, just really a nice bit. Got a good walk to her. Uh, there's not a whole lot there that you can find wrong with her. In case those two fillies went for too much, we had some other horses making the short list. Now, obviously, it depends on where they're listed as hip number in the catalog. And if you spend your money on the first one on the list, then will you regret it if the other one's higher up on the list go within your price range but you've already spent the money or if perhaps you pass on one waiting for the higher one on your list will you live to regret it if perhaps that later yearling in the catalog sells for outside your budget so before the sale i wanted to get down to hypothetical business with hal and have a game plan prior to the first night of the sale okay uh, well the first one is a, a hope consignment it's a, a corona cartel filly a uh, very nice filly, really couldn't find anything wrong. Hip number 89, right? Hip, hip number 89, right. A good family on the bottom side. She might be a little high for us, but we thought it was close enough where we ought to put her in there. Right. Well, a good thing as well, on our list, she'll be the first one of our of our top yes. four to, to go through, so we'll know whether we are able to, to look at the other three. So the All next right. one down the list would be 131. 131, right. A PYC filly with a, a Roger Daly. Roger Daly. Consignment and a very nice filly, a dark brown filly, uh, heavier made, a little bit bigger overall than the first filly, but uh, everything put together on the right now. And then we move over to hip number 161, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the Valiant Hero over there at Robichaux Ranch. Right. Brenda Beautiful uh, is a daughter, is it correct? Yes. Right. Yeah. So a very racy looking filly. Uh, she really impressed me that way. She looks like she's almost fit, ready to run right now, and just had that racy look to her. Uh, not a whole lot wrong with her. She's right. very, very nice. And I'm thinking she's going to be in that price range. So fitting in that second category of horses that will kind of be on the, the lower range, so kind of get us, because the, the, the object is to spend 80000 or have a $80,000 limit and pick two horses out, at least mm -hmm. two. 
uh, that would also fit into our category of in that second category the top one there hip number 43 is one that you really like right really did uh, New Mexico bread and that's one reason why I, I like it uh, for that second type horse that we're looking for because it can run for a lot of money in restricted races and, uh, and uh, just nice looking really, really nice looking well how you've You've certainly given me a wealth of information and, and, a, and a wealth of an education in these last couple of days that we've been going through these yearlings and everything. So I'm excited about going and spending this hypothetical money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad it's hypothetical. Absolutely. It was time for the sales first night. Most of the top horses on our list were within the first night, and then right off the bat, our second tier horse, hip number 43, went outside of our price range and RNA'd at $25,000. And then it was time for our first pick of our first tier horses, hip number 89, the Corona Cartel filly from the Julius Jones. Corona, this thing goes under 65,000, but it just got started. It's already 35. I mean, he's really rolling fast, so I don't think we're going to. I hope he stops pretty quick. So. Then it was on to the next horse in the first tier. The horse needed to be within 25000 to land within our budget, hip number 131. If perhaps it was a little over, I would have to make a call to my hypothetical banker to get a little extra hypothetical money. The filly went past a $25,000 mark and wound up at 27000 Then it was off to call my hypothetical banker for a quick increase on my hypothetical budget. Hypothetical Bank of Reno, how can I assist you? Yes, this is Greg Thompson, a stallion e-search, and I need an extra $2,500 increase to the $80,000 that I had borrowed uh, that I want to spend at the Rio Dosa sale. Oh, absolutely. Here at the Hypothetical Bank, we make hypothetical loans all day long. Just take as much as you need and have a nice day. Okay, thank you. You've got to be flexible, you know. You've got to be flexible and kind of give and take a little bit. And I think we were lucky that we were able to get our top pick for what we did and then get this one, which was really almost a top pick. But we're getting the kind of, well, we'd say the lower end, but uh, anyway, I think we've got two nice fillies here. Absolutely. I'm, I'm blown away and surprised that we actually got these two. Bet. I, mean, I bet we get our money back pretty quick. What I do you bet think? either that or we'll be wishing we would <laughs> we would just came <laughs> right. right home. Maybe somebody claim them for 5000 or something. How wonderful this is hypothetical money. Yeah, right? it, 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 it's so much easier. Yeah, this right. A quick update on the status of these September yearlings as we have followed them for almost nine months up to May 15th. Hip number 131, Painter Wild, has yet to make a start in 2018 and has yet to have a published work, while Hip number 89 has yet to make a start in 2018 but has one published work at Riadosa Downs. 